Lovely to see you guys here today. Guys and gals, everybody. That's a non-gender name, guys. <laughs> Glad to see y'all here today. I hope you sing with us. We're going to hear uh, Praising God Through Worship and Song to an Audience of One. Let's remember that. It's an audience of one. But it is good to see everybody here today. I want to remember Andy. He's been a little bit under the weather. That's why I'm standing up here today. So uh, be with those who are not able to be here. Think about them. Lift them up in prayer. But let's start off great and mighty. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is he. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Lift up your banner, let the anthems ring. Praises to our King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. But He's a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Sing it like you mean it. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. And all the people said, Amen. 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 Aren't you glad we have a mighty God? I'm glad you're here. We welcome you and thank you for being a part of our services today. I, you know, this is uh, my 40th Labor Day service. And it, it always is the same. This is the last holiday before you start getting into Thanksgiving and Christmas. And usually everybody's just gone. So I'm, I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're a part of us and, and glad that you're here to share uh, these things with us. Let me, first of all, mention to you the flowers here uh, are from Angie Cotton in memory of David. And she brought them and uh, set them in here with us and texted me and said, uh, I brought the flowers. So we want to say thank you to Angie and her family for letting us be a part of her and these flowers. So you remember to pray for Angie and, and keep her in your prayers. Also, uh, pray for Stan Miller. He's going to have uh, shoulder surgery this coming Thursday. Uh, so you pray for him and pray the Lord will bless and, and keep him. And then let me remind you of uh, November, uh, September the 11th is going to be our flu shot clinic. And so we want you to put that on your calendar. It will be from four, 2 to 4 in our adult 6 and 7 department. So you come and, and get your flu shot and get that taken care of. And we'll be glad to have you. And it was asked of me Wednesday night. And I've, I've failed to mention this before, but it's, it's for everybody. If you want to invite somebody to come, uh, then invite them to come and, and uh, get their flu shot. So keep that in mind and, and ask the Lord to bless us. And then remember, uh, this evening there will be no evening service uh, because of the holiday. This is our family Sunday. So you be sure and keep that in mind. But we're glad that you're here. We want to pray for these that we've mentioned. Pray for those that are on your heart. But we also pray for today. God's got something special for us. And so we trust him to touch our hearts and change us today. So let's pray together. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for your grace, your mercy. Thank you, Father, for every good and perfect gift that's been ours today. Lord, you have blessed and you have blessed in a mighty way. So, Father, we ask your blessings on those, Father, that we have uh, mentioned to you today. Uh, Father, we uh, pray for Angie. We pray, Lord, for uh, comfort and grace in her life, Father, that you would touch her and 
Bless her, bless her in a very special way and bless her family. And, Lord, keep them close to you. And Father, I pray for Stan as he prepares for the surgery. Lord, bless the doctors and all of those who are a part of that. Lord, I pray for healing, Father, that he can be up and about and, and serving soon. So, Lord, we just pray that you touch and bless. And, Father, there are many others that are sick. Lord, we've got things going around with the upper respiratory and, and some of it's uh, some COVID. And, Father, we just ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you would touch, that you would heal that you would bless and we'll praise you and thank you for that father we want to thank you lord for taking care of us through this summer lord and, and uh, lord you know how we are uh, lord sometimes we just complain a whole lot when it doesn't rain or it doesn't meet our needs but lord we just thank you for the rain that you've sent us and lord we thank you for the rain you're going to send us we believe, Lord, that you're going to take care of our needs, that you're going to send the rain, and, and things are going to begin to uh, green up again, Lord. And we just ask, Lord, that you bless that in a very special way. Father, we ask your blessings on this service today. We pray, Father, for Brian as he leads us. Ask, Lord, that you continue to bless and touch him. And for our instrumentalist, Lord, I thank you uh, for their willingness to serve. We pray your blessings on Andy. Father, that you would touch and heal him and his family, and Lord, just keep them in your care. But now, Father, we pray that you would bless us today as we open the word. May Jesus Christ be exalted and lifted up. And Father, may you be glorified in everything that's said and done. Touch our hearts and change our lives, Father. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're glad you're here. We welcome you and thank you for being a part of us. If you're a guest in our church today, you have the worship folder with you and, and inside of it, there's a portion that says, Welcome to Central Baptist. Fill that out for us if you would. It's perforated. Tear it off. Put it in the offering plate when it comes by. We just want to have a record of your visit. We're so glad that you're here. Looking forward to worshiping with you and to all of those that are a part of us today. So let's stand together and love somebody in the name of the Lord. Texas. I'm Norman Rushing, pastor of the church. It's a joy to welcome you to say thank you for being a part of us and sharing this time with us. Our people are moving about, they're greeting each other, loving each other in the name of the Lord. It's always a great time to see uh, people sharing the love of Christ with each other. And we hope that you feel that same love, whether you're on the radio or uh, the Facebook is working. We just pray that God will bless and, and minister to you and meet your need. And we just pray that God touches you as we worship together today. If you're working today, God bless you. We pray that God ministers to you and blesses you. And we just thank God for the privilege that we have uh, to uh, be able to minister to you as you're out working and, and sharing those this time with us. Thank you for sharing with others about what we're doing uh, with our, our radio feed. In just a moment, I want you to take your Bible and join me in Matthew chapter 21. This is our Labor Day weekend, and we're going to talk about work, hard work, the work that God's given us. Folks, every, every one of us need to understand uh, that just because we've been saved and baptized doesn't mean that's all there is. We've got work to do, and we'll see what God says to us about that work. So you have your Bible ready, Matthew chapter 21, and we will share together from the Word of God. I'm so glad that you're a part of us today. Thank you for being with us. God bless you. We love you in the Lord.
brothers and sisters are we washed in the blood and grounded in the word living in salvation full and free thank you would you all be seated it's good to see all the johnson family over here glad to see y'all here today all right, we're going to sing Serve the Lord with Gladness. As we sing these songs, think about the words that you're singing. Right, right. It's not just the repetitiveness of the song. It's not a song that we've known forever, but think about the words. Amen. What is it that we're actually singing to our God above? Amen. Serve the Lord with gladness in our works and ways. Come before His presence with our song of praise. Unto Him, our Maker, we would pledge anew life's supreme devotion to serve us through. Serve Him with gladness enter his courts with song to our creator true praises belong great is his mercy wonderful is his name we gladly serve smile bless the truth enduring always just the same we will serve with gladness and praise his name serve him with gladness enter his courts with song to our creator true praises belong Great is His mercy, wonderful is His name. We gladly serve Him, His great love proclaim. Serve the Lord with gladness, this shall be our theme. As we walk together in His love supreme, Listening, ever listening for the still small voice. His sweet will, so precious, will be our voice. Serve him with gladness, enter his courts with song. To our Creator, true praises belong. Great. Wonderful is his name. We gladly serve him, his great love proclaim. O oh, land of rest for thee, I sigh when will the moment come when I shall lay my armor by and well in peace at home we'll work till jesus comes we'll work till jesus comes we'll work till jesus comes and we'll be gathered home to jesus christ i fled for to roam and lean for comfort on his breast till he conducts me home. We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus 
Jesus comes, we'll work till Jesus comes and we'll be gathered. We're going to repeat that again. We'll work till Jesus comes, we'll work till Jesus comes, we'll work till Jesus comes and we'll be gathered home. I will serve thee because I love. Remember, you're singing this to God. You have given life to me. I was not you found me you have given life to me heartaches broken pieces ruin lives are why you Y'all stand with me and let's sing that again. Sing it from your heart. I will serve thee because I love thee. You have given life to me. I was not. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord. Father, at this time we come, Lord, to, to just to uh, worship you, Lord, and, and uh, love you, Lord, in, in the only way we as humans know how, Father. We pray that you'll just be with us in this service, in your word that's brought to us. Be with Brother Norman, Lord, it, as he brings those words, Lord, just lift him up, Father, and Father, we just ask that you be with us in this offering, Lord, that you'll just open up our hearts, Lord, and be able to give back a portion of what you've allowed us to have. And Father, we just, again, we just want to praise you and thank you for what you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Thank you, Amy. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. What a beautiful song. I want you to take your Bible this morning and join me in Matthew 21. Matthew 21. You know, oftentimes, these last few years, you find yourself saying, I'm tired. It just becomes something that's just a normal thing to you. I'm, I'm tired. We used to, we used to, and if you notice that what we used to, we either can't do or don't do, but we used to. And then I got to thinking, I keep, I say, you know, I'm, I'm tired. But then I, I think back, and, and if I talk to my grandchildren, and I say, how are you? And they say, I'm tired. <laughs> now, I don't understand that. You know, when I was their age, I didn't get tired. When they get my age, they'll see what tired's all about. <laughs> but I found something I, I want to share with you. This, is, this was an anonymous donor. It's out of a book of uh, Chuck Swindoll's a book of illustrations that he has. And this, this is from an anonymous donor given to him. And, and here's what it says. Listen to this, see if it doesn't apply to you. Yes, I'm tired. For several years, I've been blaming it, blaming it on middle age, iron poor blood, lack of vitamins, air pollution, water pollution, saccharine obesity, dieting, underarm odor, yellow wax buildup, and a dozen other maladies that make you wonder if life's worth living. But now I find out that taint the truth. I'm tired because I'm overworked. Now here, here's, listen to this. The population of this country, and you can tell this it's, was written a while back. The population of this country is over 200 million. 84 million are retired. That leaves 116 million to do the work. There are 75 million in school, which leaves 41 million to do the work. Of this total, there are 22 million employed by the government. And they never work. That leaves 19 million to do the work. 4 million are in the armed forces, which leaves 15 million to do the work. Take that total from the 14,800,000 people who work for the state and city governments, and that leaves 200,000 to do the work. There are 188,000 people in the hospital. That leaves 12,000 to do the work. Now there are 11,998 people that are in prison. That leaves two people to do the work, you and me. You're standing there reading this, no wonder I'm tired. <laughs> do you feel that way? How many of you right now, honestly? Here we go. How many of you, honestly? You're sitting there and you're thinking... I'm tired. Remember, God's watching. He knows what you're thinking. And it's, it's, just, a, it's just a certain part of life. We, we reach that stage where we say, I'm, I'm tired. And we attribute it to, well, I've been working too hard. I've been doing this. I've been doing that. And so because of that, then we say, well, I'm just tired. Some of you can remember, as, as I did, when I... When I got just big enough where I could uh, think about things and think them through, my daddy came in one day and said, you got to get a job. Well, I was 10 years old. But back then, you could get a job. And so he thought, you need to get a job. Get a job. So I got a job. I washed dishes in a restaurant. That's what I thought. And then I found out that you don't do nothing but sweat back there. And so I began to look around. As time went on, I got another job and another job and another job. And then when I was in high school, I worked at a particular job and I worked every summer for this same individual. And then I got out of, out of school and I found work on the police department here. And then I went to the DPS Academy and I was doing fine doing that work. And then I found an escape. I remembered that I had surrendered to the ministry and this church came open and I hadn't worked since. And 
and I've offered this to several people. They say, you know, I'm, I'm just tired. I don't want to work anymore. And I said, well, come do what I do. It's not hard. But when you think about it, we all find ourselves at a point where we say, you know, I, I just, I don't want to work anymore. I'm just tired. Well, folks, let me ask you a question. When we talk about not wanting to work or talking about being tired, do you realize that's physically? And for some reason, we have equated physical tiredness to spiritual tiredness. Because not only are we to work physically, we are to be working spiritually. God saves you, you're baptized, and the preacher says you're now a member of our church. And we think that that's all there is to Christianity. What are we supposed to do? What are, what are we supposed to do when we realize that, yes, I've been saved, and, and yes, I have uh, been baptized, and yes, I'm a member of a church, and then we, we go out and we just do the physical things, and we leave all of this behind, and then we come back on Sunday morning or when we can or whatever it might be, and we talk about being tired because we're talking about being tired physically. Sometimes we think that, that it's just kind of a necessary evil. But people say, I'm looking for a job. I want a job that has the least possible effort involved in it. I want a job where I can finish in the shortest possible time. I want a job that pays me more than I'm worth and as much as I can possibly get. And I want to work so that I can be rich and not have to work. That's great. I, I, and I, I wish and hope everybody else can say that one of these days. I'm, I'm rich and I don't have to work anymore. Hope you can. But I'm going to tell you something, and this has been on my mind, and, and I can't get it off, and I'm going to get it off today. We may gain in our physical life, but the question that we ask today is this. What are you doing in your calling to the Lord Jesus Christ in your service to Him? Are you working for the Lord. You say, preacher, I'm not in the ministry. I don't have to work wrong. And, and I'm going to show you some things in a minute. But understand this. Every born again child of God, and I'm, I'm asking you now, do you, do you really believe that you've been born again, that you've been saved? Okay, yeah, I, I do. And that I, I followed through in the baptism, and yeah, I've done that, and then I'm a member of this church, and yeah, I've done that. But what have you done to the gift that God has given to you to accomplish His purpose in this world? He wants you to serve Him. How much work are we doing for God? You see, He doesn't send us out as slaves and make us. He sends us out as His servants and asks us to follow me. I read the story of, uh, and some of you may not know what I'm fixing to say. It's called the Venerable Beatty. It was way back in, in the hundreds A.D., somewhere back in there. And there was an old man out in the field and he was plowing pulling by a, a donkey or a, a mule or whatever, and, or an ox, and he's plowing by himself, up one side, down the other. All of a sudden, he looks up over the horizon, and he sees this dust. And the dust gets heavier and heavier, and he's looking, and he, but he keeps on moving, and he's looking, and all of a sudden, there's a person comes over the hill, and then another person, and then another, and then, then there are many, and then many more, and many more, and they're all running, and the dust is flying, and they run by the old man and say, Old man, let go of that plow and leave it behind. The world is coming to an end. And they all run by him. 
And the old man stands there with his plow a minute and he looks at them as they go off on their own. And he stops and says, whether or not the world is going to end, I really don't know. But I got to get this plowing done. And he starts back down the road. When is the world going to end? When is the rapture going to take place? When am I going to breathe my last breath on this earth? Do we just sit around and think about that and ask ourselves that and say, I can't do anything because it might happen today. Do you really know when it's going to happen? We'll sing a song. We'll work till what? Jesus comes. Your hand is to be on the plow. Your concern is not to be when God is going to remove us or change it. That's not our concern. Our concern is, Lord, what would you have me to do today? It's Labor Day. I've never understood this holiday. Labor Day. What do we do on Labor Day? You take off work. <laughs> right? Everything closes and almost everything. Some people have to still go. But we just, we just take off work. But whether or not it's a holiday or it's just a normal day or it's another day, we've got work to do. And I want to show it to you from the Scripture. That you and I have spiritual work that needs to be done. And we are not doing it. Is your hand on the plow? Are you still moving? Matthew chapter 21, look at verse 28. It's, it's basically called the parable of the two sons. Verse 28 says, well, what think you? A certain man had two sons and he came to the first and said, son, go work today in my vineyard. The son answered and said, I will not. But then all of a sudden he felt bad about that and he repented and he went and started working in the field. He came to his second son and he said the same thing to him. And the son answered and said, yes, sir, I'll go. But he didn't go. Jesus asked whether of them of the two did the will of his father. And he's dealing with the Sadducees and Pharisees here. And they said, the first, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you that the publicans and the harlots, that's the tax collectors and the prostitutes of the day, go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and you believed him not. He's talking about John the Baptist. But the publicans and the harlots believed him, and you, when you had seen it, repented not afterward that you might believe him. God's called us to go to work. And this parable that Jesus gave to us, the parable applies to me and you in our daily walk and in our life as a child of God. We have work that we are to do. But we've got to examine this for a little bit. We've got to decide exactly what it is that God wants from us and what are we to be doing. Everyone born in the world, every one of us, were a fresh thought of God. When I was conceived, God knew it. I was, a, I was a, a seed planted by God. As I was born and as I began to grow, and all of a sudden my life began to take a different direction, and I found myself called unto God to do just exactly what I'm doing. But just because I'm the preacher here, and I, I do different things around, and I go to the hospital, and I, I do funerals, and I do this, and I do that, and I do something else, it doesn't mean that I'm fulfilling every obligation that I have. I've got work to do beyond what's here. I've got things that I'm supposed to be doing. And I look at that and I ask myself, am I really doing these things? So what is this work? The work that God has for you. Let's begin it like this. God's work is hard work in the vineyard that God has given to you. He's calling us to the vineyard just like he did with his son. And he has chosen you. He went to his son. And he said, go to work. 
Why? Hard work is the dignity of God at work in our lives. And the reason that God wants us to work is because He is on the throne at work. And for us to go to work, hard work, we dignify the Savior, Jesus Christ. He has called us, and He has sent us. And it's going to be hard work. So what are we supposed to do? Listen, God is not interested in our excuses. God is not interested when we say, you know, God, I'd like to do that, but see, I just can't. I, I, can't, I can't witness for you, Lord, because I can't tell anybody else about it. I can't minister because I just don't know what to say. I don't want what to do, so I, I don't need to go over to those people and, and, and share my love with them. I, I just can't do that. And we have so many excuses that we give to God, and God listens to us, and He just shakes His head. Where is it that we have limited God so that we can't go and do the things that God has asked us to do? Yes, I know it's hard. But have you ever found yourself in the work of God? Have you ever found yourself alone? Have you? If you, if you will listen real close... When you set forth to minister and, and you've got all these excuses in your head and all Jesus says is, you go, I'll be there. It's amazing what we can say that we don't know how it came out of our mouth. It's amazing what we can do if we just go and, and touch somebody on the shoulder and say, I'm, I'm praying for you and I love you. That work seems to be beyond our comprehension and it's just not for us. But God is not interested in Christians that are idlers. Just sit back and watch it go by. He's not interested in shirkers. Shirking your duty. You've got work to do. I've got work to do. And he's not interested in what you say to him as you, as you shirk your duty. He's not interested in busybodies. People that are in everybody else's business and doing everything and think that they have all the answers and, and they try to make sure that we do what they do. God's not interested in that. And the scripture will bear it out that the busybodies need to just back up and be a servant for God. God will take care of all of the answers and he's not interested in the sluggards, the lazy people. He's not interested in you sitting back and say, I've worked hard all week. I can't do anything else other than that. Let me read to you something that the Apostle Paul said. And I, I had a dear friend in Childers when I was pastoring there. And he was the band director for nearly 30 years. And he became the county judge. <clears throat> and he asked me one day, he said, isn't there a scripture uh, in the Bible that, that talks about uh, somebody having to work before they'd get anything else and I said yeah and so I gave him the scripture and he had a plaque put on his his wall there in the uh, county judge's office right above his head and the verse is this it's second Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 10 and here's what Paul said for even when we were with you this we commanded you that if any would not work neither should he eat Isn't it amazing that we want things just given to us without giving of ourselves and doing for ourselves? The scripture bears it out. And this is what Paul said, because this is what God said to him. If you don't work, you don't eat. You need to get up and get busy and do the things that God has asked you to do. We don't eat free. We work. We labor. We give of, uh, give of ourselves and give ourselves unto God. Because you see, the Father's business begins with the fact of what Jesus said to us, take up your cross and follow me. That's hard work, isn't it? Take up your cross. How many people on a daily basis see your cross? How many, have, how many times do they see it in your face, in your smile, in your handshake? 
in your words that you share with them. Now, we can excuse all of this and we can do everything that we want to do with this. But God is telling us that we have work that we are to do. And the first thing is you take up your cross because God has sent me, Jesus said. I am sending you. And we are to take our cross and let others see Jesus in us. That's part of the work. Do they see Jesus? When they look at you, do they see Jesus? See, it dignifies God. When we work in dignity, we work so that we can provide and give to our families and give to ourselves. God's also commanded us, every Christian, to do his own work. You see, it's it's what God wants you to do, and it's what God wants me to do. God has designated every child of the kingdom of God. And listen, he has gifted us in the service for him. Listen to what Peter said. As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Oh, preacher, I, I, I know there's gifts, and, and I've, I've heard you talk about uh, we have gifts that we are supposed to have, but really, preacher, I don't have any gifts. I, I, I really don't have anything that, that God's ever given to me, so I, I really can't fulfill that. Well, here's the understanding. Here's what I want you to hear. The Scripture is very plain. God has given every born-again child of God at least one gift. Some have two some three, some more. But God has given you a gift. And you say, but I don't know what the gift is. And you know why? Because you haven't been in the presence of God and said, Lord, show me that gift. But yet many times we have that gift and we set it off to the side because we don't want to get involved in that. And then we pull back and say, Lord, I don't know what you're talking about. We hide it in the closet because we don't want to know any of those things. God says, six days, work. Seventh day, worship. You thought I was going to say rest, didn't you? Six days, work. You got work to do. Seventh day, we worship God. But the thing that we need to understand is, this is our work. You do your work. I do my work. That is our work, which means that you and I are to work together. You understand? As as a child, as, as as a part of this church, I'm a part of this church. I'm a church member here. You're a part of this church. If you're a member here, you're a part of this church. We are to work together. Now, I'm, I can't just overlook you. And folks, you know, over the years, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. And I've made a lot of mistakes here. And I've, I've said some things, and, and sometimes it gets taken wrong, and sometimes I shouldn't have said it, and so on and so on. And, and all of these things. I know it. I'm not perfect. But one of the things that I've tried to do, and one of the things I want you to do, and the things that we are to do, is that we are to join our hands together, and we are to work for the kingdom of God. I'm not here to fight against you. I'm not here to say I'm better than you. I'm not here to say that, that we can do all, you can do this and then I'll sit back and do nothing, folks. I want to work with you. And that's what God asks of us. He gives to us a gift. We're to bring those gifts together and serve the Lord. God's opened this door for us. And this door that he's opened is so that you and I can follow the pattern that Jesus has given to us. And the work that we have to do. Those are the things that God wants for us. But you know what, what hard work really is? The hard work is working together. But hard work is working just like God. And in Exodus fourteen thirteen, Moses said, Stand still and see the work of the Lord. And that's when they were going across the Red Sea and coming out. And they were going to see the things of God as God was at work in their life. And God's at work in my life and God's at work in your life. And this work is what we are to do. But it is to be steadfast. Hard work is to be steadfast in God's service. 
I've got something to do. Don't lose the opportunity. Now, I know that some of you are sitting there thinking, well, preacher, you know, I've got a job and I, I can't be around too many people and, and this and that. And, and you know, I, I can't think about anything else. I get that. I know that. I understand that. And I'm not talking about every 24 hours you're following somebody around or you're doing something. I'm talking about the fact that you and I recognize, first of all, the gift that we have. Second of all, God has implemented that gift in you. And God has given you that gift because that's what you can do. And if we just set that aside, we are sinning against God. We have to make sure that we are doing the things that God wants us to do and then stick with the work. What can you do? I can't teach a class. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't sing. I wish I could, but I can't. If I was to try, it would be good. God didn't gift me with that. He gave it to Brian. Aren't you glad Brian was here this morning or I'd had to leave the music? Joyce can sing. And I, I could go up and down the aisle and I can talk about these people can sing, play the piano. Sue can play the piano. Amy plays the piano. I can't do that. I don't have that gift. And well, if I can't do that, then I, I guess I'm not a part of the church. See how we think? There's a lot of things in the church that I can't do. A lot of things. But other people can. And I hope to work side by side with them. You see, what God wants of us is, is just to keep doing. Be steadfast. We have to be steadfast in our relationship and know that we have Christ as our Savior. Has Jesus saved you? If you say, yes, He has, then we are brothers and sisters in Christ. Together. And we serve Him together and work together we're to be steadfast in our faith you remember when elijah went up on the on mount carmel and there he he challenged the the prophets of baal and elijah said to them if baal be god worship him but if god is god worship him and we all know how that came out when Ezekiel or when uh, Elijah uh, called out and prayed unto God, and God sent down the fire and, and uh, dried up the water and burned up the altar and everything that was there, God was God. Baal was destroyed at that particular time. And then you know what Elijah did? He heard about a woman named Jezebel, and he took off running. And he ran away from the work that was to be done because he was afraid of what she might do to him. How many times have you found yourself faced with the opportunity of being a witness for Christ and yet back up because you see a friend and they might make fun of you? Saying something, laughing at you, doing those things that cause us to hurt and to back away we got to be steadfast in our living for christ being what god wants us to be folks it's hard work but sometimes you just have to take a deep breath bite the bullet and go forth for the glory of god it's not only hard work it's teamwork teamwork we talked about it a minute ago is our fellow workers working together for the glory of God. Let me, let me read to you what uh, Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes. Two are better than one. Because they have good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falls. For he has no, not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him... Two shall withstand him, and threefold cord is not quickly broken. We're together. Folks, the name of this building or the name of this, this church is Central Baptist Church. That's me. That's you. And he's called us together to work 
There's not a one of us in here that's perfect. We'll never be perfect. But he sent us out together so that we might please God and work together. It doesn't mean that God will give me your work. Or he'll give you my work. Because that causes envy and jealousy. God gives you yours. God gives you my, or God gives me uh, mine and God gives you yours. And you bring those things together and we begin to serve the Lord with gladness. Together as one. Marching forward as God has given to us. Two are better than one, he said. Which means that you and I together can reach out and we can make a difference in the lives of those that are around us. Those that we work with. Those that we're a part of. As long as we're willing to go to work. Teamwork is God's plan. You remember when they, in the Old Testament, if you read through the Old Testament, you remember when they built the tabernacle in the wilderness? Did Moses build that all by himself? No. He had the tribes, and they came in. He had different ones that that could work with their hands with wood, and those with silver, and other kinds of things that they needed, that they could, and the brass that they could put the tabernacle together. And it took all of them together to get everything done. You remember that? You remember when when, uh, David was going to build a temple to God? And God said, David, you're not going to build that temple. Solomon will build a temple. When Solomon came along, how do you think everything was ready for Solomon to build a temple? Because David had all the pieces brought in. The wood Everything that was needed. David and other kings. And they brought these things in. They had it all together. And Solomon began to build. And he built it together. Remember that? Jesus sent out his disciples. How? Remember what it says? Jesus sent out his disciples. How did he send them out? Two by two. 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 He sent them out. So that they could work together. So that if one didn't speak, the other one would. And all of that brought them together because they went out two by two. Remember Nehemiah? Nehemiah begged to leave where he was a cupbearer. And he went back to Jerusalem because the town had been destroyed. And he was building the wall. And the scripture says that he built the wall with a trowel in one hand and a sword in the other. And he was willing to fight so he could get that wall built back for the glorious city of Jerusalem But it took Nehemiah and those around him with a sword in a hand and a trowel in a hand and doing the work that God had given to them. You remember Esther and Mordecai? You remember when Esther was called to be the queen? You remember when Mordecai encouraged her and kept the the hotline hot to tell her what was going on and what was going to happen at that particular time? It took both of them, but they got Haman put on his gallows. And he was hung, and Esther became the leader, the queen. And Mordecai was raised up so that he could help in the kingdom as well. It took both of them, but they got it done. You remember a little thing called Pentecost? You remember that time? They talked about Peter and James and John, all the disciples. And then they talked about the men and the women that gathered in the upper room, even... The mother of Jesus gathered in the upper room. And when all 120 gathered, 10 days they prayed. And all of a sudden, when God was ready, when the city was ready, when everyone was ready, God sent the power of the Holy Spirit down through that room. And Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, went out and he declared, You people of God... And he told them that they had to be saved. And 3,000 souls were added to the kingdom that day. And you say, preacher, we can't do that. Yes, we can. When we let God be God. But it took those working together. How many of you have ever looked at a snowflake that you could see? And then another would fall and it didn't look like the same thing and then they tell us that no snowflake is the same in in its design 
I don't know who did that. I, every time I picked up one, it just melted. I didn't know what to do with it. But you can take a snowflake and you don't get cold. Nothing happens. You look at it and it just disappears. But you give us one of those blue northers that brings in about 10 or 12 inches of snow and lines itself all around us. We find ourselves inside because we can't get out. It's the power of all of the snowflakes together that change us. We can't do what we can do with one snowflake, with all of that that's laying around us. The power of that snow is so strong, but it's given to us by God. And folks, we can take one and add to it another and then another, and we can move forward, and the power of Almighty God will change our lives and those that are around us if we will just work as a team. You want to be successful? You link yourself with God and other Christian people. Link yourself to the Word of God. Now, don't misunderstand me here. God wants you to work for your, for your physical needs. That, that's why we go to work every day. That's what God has to do. Go to work. You go and you work. And we receive comp- compensation for the work that we do. We provide home, food transportation, all of these things, clothing, all of that comes because we work and God expects us to do that. But don't forget the spiritual side of this. Our God that blesses us with all of these material things will bless us when we say, Lord, I'm here as your servant. Use me for your glory. Oh, God has done so many beautiful things. We had a pretty moon Wednesday night big and red as it came up over the horizon and went up and it just shined so brightly. We see all of that and we think about all of the things that God has done and God did it through, individ- through uh, with His Son. You see God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, God the Son all working together. See what God has done? Teamwork. We do it together. We serve together. You find your gift. Let's discover what that is and then use it for the glory of God. And then there's one other thing I want you to see. God rewards our work. If we get busy and start doing it, there's rewards for that. First of all, He rewards us by His presence with us every day. How many of you have have the assurance of the presence of God today, right now? That's easy because we're in church. But how about when you're out working? How many times do you just talk to God when you're working? How many times do we just lift up the name of God and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for the job. Thank you for what I have. Thank you for what I'm going to do. You're never alone. Shouldn't we, shouldn't we praise God for the fact that we're never alone and, and daily that we are there for Him? He rewards us with His presence, but He also rewards us with His faithfulness. You've got to finish plowing. Remember what I told you about that old man said, I've got to finish plowing. If you read over in Luke, I think it's chapter 9, Luke says this, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. You can't plow a straight row looking back. Now, you, you can with these tractors today. See, I'm way ahead of you. I know that. But if you just have your hand to the plow and you start going, you've got to keep your eyes ahead. You can't do the things of God looking around and stopping and going and a two or three weeks later pick it up and do it again. You've got plowing to do. You don't know when anything's going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I'll tell you this. If Jesus wants to come today, I'm ready to go. How about you? If Jesus wants to come right now, 
I'm, I'm ready to go and be with him. How about you? See, so we shouldn't worry about that. We settle that. And when we get it settled, we've got to get busy. He rewards us when we build on, our, on a proper foundation. And the only proper foundation, his name is Jesus Christ. And your work that you do, that God has given you, is built upon him. And he rewards us. When we stand at the judgment seat of Christ. Now, if you're born again, you're going to stand at the judgment seat. And he will reward you or he will take the rewards away from you. He will judge you for your service to him. The work that you did. If your works burn up, the service burns up, you have nothing to give to Jesus when you get into heaven. He'll wipe, he'll wipe your tears away but you have nothing to give him. But if you get to work and get busy, it's amazing. God's judgment will bring to you rewards. Crowns, they called. But they don't stack up on our head. He gives them to us because he says, well done. But we will take them and we will lay them at the feet of Jesus and say, you deserve it, not me. What will you bring to Jesus? If right now you say, I don't have anything, then it's time to go to work for the glory of God. Let's pray together. As your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, right now there may be one that has never accepted Christ as their Savior. And you're here and you don't have anything because you don't know the Savior that brings to us the joy of serving the Lord. I want to offer you an opportunity to open your heart in faith and pray a prayer with me, believing that God's going to do what you ask Him to do. Because you see, this is the beginning of the work that you have to do. So you pray with me this prayer. Dear Father, I know that I'm a lost sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ died for me. I believe he rose again. By faith, Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of all of my sin. Save me, Lord. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. If you've prayed that prayer with me, I want you to get up from where you are right now. Come down here. Sit on this front pew. I'll be with you in just a minute. But you come. If you want to pray that prayer, but you didn't do it, but you'd like to, nobody's looking, come sit down here. We'll pray it together. You come. Come and know Him. Maybe you, you need a church home where you can join hands with us. And we'll go to work. Work with you. You work with me. We work with this one. We work with the other one. Time to go to work. If God is calling you to be a part of the fellowship of this church, you come by, by letter from another Baptist church. You can come by statement if you have been saved by the grace of God and you know that, that you've been baptized by immersion and you know that. You can come and be a part of the fellowship of this church by statement. We'll receive you then. Whatever God's laid on your heart. It's time to get busy. Time to go to work. You can't rely on somebody else. you got to go to work. i got to go to work. We've got things to do. How about joining together? And let's get them done for the glory of God. Father, this is your invitation. Touch the hearts of your people. Change us, O oh God. Help us to step forward and say, yes, I want to go to work for the Lord Jesus. Lord, it's in your hands now. Be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. As we stand together and as we sing, I invite you to come. Come now, but come quickly. Living for Jesus. Living for Jesus, that's what he asks us. Would you, would you say, that's me today? I want to begin living for him, serving him. Come to him.
This is the pathway. Our Savior and our Lord, you come. For me, oh Jesus, Lord and Savior. Is He your Lord and Savior? He's not. You need to make that today. Yes, He is, my Lord, my Savior. I know Him. You come. Be the church home, you come. Whatever God is speaking, you come. Shall be thy throne, my life I give henceforth to live. O Christ, for thee alone. God bless you. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you so much in sharing this time with us and being a part of us. I remember this is one of our family Sundays where we don't come back on Sunday night, but we'll look for you on Wednesday at 6.30. We'll be uh, in Adult 6 and 7, and we're at, up to the church at Thyatira in the uh, second uh, chapter of Revelation. So you come. Let's study those that together and, and uh, seek the word of the Lord there. Now, the youth will not meet this coming Wednesday, but the following Wednesday. Uh, there'll be meetings, so guys, keep that in mind. Don't give up. We're going to get there, so we'll look to see you on the 13th and, and be a part of that. Pray for those that are in need. Pray for Andy and his family uh, dealing with this. Uh, he said he just got a terrible cough, and a lot of that's going around, so you pray for them and ask God to bless them and minister to them uh, today. I don't know of anything else. Do you all know of anything else? I think about all we need to do now is go home and eat, isn't it? <laughs> Look forward to seeing you next Sunday. God bless you. Let's join hands across the auditorium. Let's sing together. Nobody likes you. Love somebody in the like name of the Lord. Be a witness every day. Let the love of Christ come shining through as you travel on your way. Let us be a beacon in the darkness of the world, shining with the light of Jesus' love. Set our souls afire and fill us with your power. Shower us with blessings from above.